Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary. Today we celebrate Thursday of the fourth week in ordinary time. We are about to enter into the sacred mysteries of our faith. Let us take this time to quiet ourselves and to open ourselves to divine grace as we begin our celebration. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me, me to, the to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. us pray. Grant us, O Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to 
the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, we have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gatherings and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the north in the city of the great king God is with her castles renowned is he as a stronghold oh God we ponder your mercy within your temple as we heard so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts in the city of our God God makes it firm forever oh God we ponder your mercy within your time stand. Alleluia. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there 
and shake off the dust from your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, on this particular Thursday, which takes place in the midst of Catholic Schools Week, first of all, we pause to give thanks to God that we have the opportunity to be part of a Catholic school. The word Catholic, as some of you may know, means universal. Instead of just being small and little and restricted or limited, universal means full, complete, and total. And that's what it means to be a Catholic that we have this great gift that God gives us of everything, not just a little piece, not just one sacrament or another sacrament, but all of the sacraments of the church, all of the fullness and means of grace that God desires for us. So as Catholics, that is what has been given to us, entrusted to us, an extraordinary gift that is ours by the fact of our Catholic baptism. And then to be in a Catholic school, it means that we get to live that great reality not just on Sundays or on our own the rest of the week, but we are in the midst of an environment, an educational experience where through everything that we do, that is reinforced and we are reconnected to the source of all life, the source of all grace, the source of all goodness and mercy and kindness and love. To be part of a Catholic school is an extraordinary gift and privilege. And my hope and my prayer is that every year when we have this Catholic School Week, that all of us, teachers and students and faculty and priests, that all of us will recognize the gift that is ours. Today in the Gospel, we hear about the call, the mission sent forth of the special friends of Jesus, the Apostles. Today at St. Mary's Cathedral School, in the midst of this Catholic Schools Week, we also celebrate Career Day. And I look out and I see some of you are dressed up like doctors and lawyers and baseball players and I don't know what else, but all kinds of wonderful things. Today, in the Gospel, we hear a little bit about the career, if you will, of the Apostles. And the, gospel, the career of the, of the Apostles was to go out into the world with Jesus in his spirit and in the name of Jesus to do the work of Jesus, to heal the sick, to preach the good news, to liberate the captives, to be a living presence of God's mercy and love in the midst of the world. In other words, to be a good Catholic in the midst of the world. That was the career, if you will, of the apostles. But it's also, and this is what's very important for us to understand, some of you dressed up like doctors or lawyers or firemen. All of us, the career of all of us, if you will, is to bring the love of Jesus into the world. Some of you will do it as doctors. Some of you will do it as firefighters. Some of you will do it as teachers. Some of you will do it as priests. Some of you will do it as religious women, mothers and fathers and all kinds of things. The career, if you will, of every one of us, no matter what kind of a hat we wear or what kind of a uniform we put on in the morning, is to be a friend of Jesus and to bring Jesus' love, Jesus' mercy, Jesus' goodness into the whole world whenever and wherever we are. And today in the Gospel, too, the Lord sends them out two by two. He doesn't send them out alone. And he doesn't send us out alone. Because one of the beautiful things about being in a Catholic school, it's this extraordinary reminder every day that we're together. We're not alone. But we have not only the community that's with us right here and right now, 
but throughout the entire world we're linked through our baptism and our faith to other Catholic communities and other Christian people throughout the world and also to the whole world as created by the God himself. But also the great gift of being a Catholic is this, that we know for the fact that even if we are alone in a room, the reality is we're not alone because we have with us always the friends of God who live with God, the angels and the saints. We are always accompanied. We are always in companionship. We are never alone because the friends of God are with us always in all places. Wherever God is and God is everywhere, the friends of God are there too. And that's the great gift of being a Catholic. That's the great gift of being in a Catholic school. That's the great gift of the gospel of today. That we're together to do good things, to be good, and to do good. When you're a friend of God, you're going to be a friend of everyone. Please stand. Let us stand now as we offer our prayers to the Lord. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, Archbishop Thomas Wensky, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of the world that have worked together to promote peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Mary's school community, that we would serve others in all that we do and work together to love others as Christ loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, suffering, or in any kind of danger, that they would experience the healing power of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving. For all the blessings in our lives, especially our families, friends, and school community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially those who have passed from COVID, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Oh. 
time of trouble. He shall hide me, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy through your beloved son. Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection and so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim holy indeed holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 